In the previous video in this series I was looking at uh, problems with the backplane and um, I have now got the backplane up to the point where it's given me consistent results I'm getting a reasonable connectivity across it I do not consider it to be repaired I think a lot of the solder joints are still very suspect but I think it is now working at least well enough to allow me to continue fault finding on the boards. This unit still will not boot up and um, it's essentially crashing or, or, or failing to execute an instruction. So it's trying to load the first instruction and um, it's stopping halfway through, it's halting and uh, that's an indication that there's something obviously seriously wrong with the CPU itself. So if I take the CPU out, the console uh, works fine, um, but when I put the CPU in, the whole machine starts acting in a very uh, flaky manner. Now when it was booting and I could get to the um, terminal emulator uh, or the console emulator, I was having issues where I tried to enter code. It would kind of work and then it would stop part way through various instructions. So I think there's an issue on the board somewhere and um, I've started with the uh, M8266 board which is the front of the two CPU boards. If you're not familiar with these machines then it might be a good idea to go back and look at the series I posted on the HP 9830A calculator. It's a very similar type of architecture to this, this is just on a much grander scale. And the way it fundamentally works is there's a set of PROMs and um, there, there are about 20 or 25 PROMs on this card alone. And they all contain custom code to provide uh, complex hard-coded logic. And 12 of those um, PROMs provide the microcode sequencing. And you can look at it as a single uh, 48 uh, in output ROM and um, all that uh, really happens is when a particular address within those ROMs is selected and they're all connected to a common address bus uh, the 48 output pins take on a various uh, various states those 48 uh, pins or channels or signals um, each form part of the uh, microcode format structure. So for example uh, three of the PROMs um, provide 12 bits that provide the BUT field in the microcode structure and that's kind of how it works and those bits are used to control the various uh, operations within the overall CPU as it processes an instruction. Uh, I will be posting an entirely separate uh, video series on uh, how this works uh, if I ever get this machine uh, up and running although I'm starting to suspect that's not going to be a short-term um, um, uh, issue. I think it's going to take a very long time to get this machine working. Um, so uh, the other thing is that once the microcode um, PROMs have uh, effectively decoded the current step in the microcode sequence, the bits that are output into various fields may need further decoding or there are other operations within the CPU itself uh, that use further PROMs to provide uh, more of this hard-coded logic. Now the PROMs that were selected on this board uh, use what are uh, called open collector outputs. So certain groups of PROMs are all uh, connected in such a way that some of their pins are all connected onto common uh, signal lines. And as I mentioned in the previous video with open collector outputs, that's not a big issue. It, um, if they start fighting, no damage should occur. Um, but one of the issues with the way this board's been designed is I found a particular, what I believe is a particular problem with some of the PROMs, or one or more of the PROMs. And it's in the IR decode part. So it's in the, uh, essentially the instruction decoding part of the uh, CPU. And unfortunately, um, that particular line that I think is causing issues is connected to a 7404, which does not have open collector outputs. 
Um, but it's also uh, an issue with the input. It seems that the input has failed on a 7404 and it's partly shorted to the 5 volt rail. And it looks like that's uh, taken out some of the proms or one of the uh, driver pins on some of the proms. Uh, because obviously the prom's trying to pull the line lower and if it's shorted to plus 5 volts then the current um, that the prom's trying to provide is uh, outside of its specification and the output pin driver can fail. And I think that's what's happened here. So uh, the way I go about fault finding on this and the way I've kind of find, uh, found this particular fault so far and I think there may be other faults like this is um, I set up the logic analyzer and we'll look at the logic analyzer screen in a few minutes and I set up um, pods with a connector that I can clip on to the various ICs. I set the connections to match the particular device because there's a lot of the same types of device. There's more than one sort of PROM uh, but there's a lot that are uh, duplicates uh, in terms of the type. Different code but same device. So I set up the pods so I can unplug the pod, take the clip off the board, plug in another pod that I've got configured for the other devices and then just select that on the uh, logic analyzer. I've got them saved as different devices. Um, and it's a very quick way of testing this. So what I then do is try to run the board and I compare the... What I would normally do is compare the data I'm seeing for a particular address. I'm triggering on the chip enable lines of a particular PROM and um, whenever this PROM selected for a given address we should get a specific output and that's what I would normally check. Now unfortunately I have not been able to locate any images for these PROMs. I can't find any source code for the PROMs that uh, allows me to get meaningful uh, expected values so that's why I believe this might be quite difficult to repair without a working board uh, that I can take the proms out of uh, and read it might be very difficult getting this working so it might be the solution I have to take is just hunt around until I find a working board take all the proms out read them and then I can uh, burn some new proms for this board but the way I've gone about determining that I believe there's a prom issue on this is we'll start by powering this up so I'll need to turn the fan on to stop the boards overheating so unfortunately it will be uh, a bit noisy so I've got the cooling fan running, I'll boot up the PDP. So if we look at the data output pins on this PROM, if we look at the first one, you'll see there's about half a volt on the output pin, which is kind of strange and also it's low. Normally when the processor is idle, I would expect these all to be high. If we look at the next one, that is high, the next one's high, the next one's high. But if we watch what happens when I try to run the processor, so I'll try and boot it up. So it's probably hard to see, but the low values when the PROM's pulling the line low is down around zero volts. But if we look at the voltage when this line's been pulled low, it's well above zero. So I suspect there's an issue there if we look at a different output pin. Again, same thing there very low value when it's actually driving the line. So it looks like there's an issue with a driver on one of the PROMs that's connected to that line. So what we'll do now is we'll I'll move the camera so you can see the logic analyzer screen and we'll do the same test and see what data we're getting out of um, the PROM. Um, the pin that seems to be causing a problem is the Q1 pin. So it's the first uh, lowest um, order bit in that PROM. So I'll move the camera. Looking at the logic analyzer screen, you can see I've got this set up to trigger uh, when both chip enable lines are low. This particular PROM has two chip enable lines active low. And if we now try and capture some data, let's turn off the pattern markers on this. Okay, so we're armed. I'll now try running the processor. So if we ignore the spurious um, cycles, that's um, the short ones, and look at the full bus cycles, then we'll see that 
the bit data naught line, which is the top red line, uh, is never um, it's never going high. It's it's always low whenever data has been output. So it could be this particular prom is uh, failing. Now, of course, I, I don't know this for sure because I don't have the uh, image for that particular prom. But I've been looking around at the other proms on the same line and I'm getting similar types of uh, results, very similar patterns. I'm never seeing that particular line go high. And because of what that line controls, which is it's essentially being used to control the clocking of the main processor, and because that line is, uh, is never going high, I suspect that um, there's an issue with one of the PROMs on that particular, or that controls that particular line. I think there are five in total that feed uh, potential signals into that line, so it's one of those that's um, not working. I'm going to try and pin it down further, but without the ROM images it does make it very difficult. OK, I'll move the camera back so you can see the board again. So what I'm going to do now is go through, check all the other uh, major types of device that uh, seem to be preventing the CPU cycle from, from completing. So I will, I've already checked all the bus drivers and they're fine. And um, I think there are three different types of PROM on this board, so I'm going through and checking all those. I do need to replace the 7404 that seems to have created um, the problem we're looking at here. Uh, but this is a very quick and easy way to test the individual components on this board. Uh, you might be tempted to go and start fault finding the entire CPU cycle by looking at the Unibus. Now you can do that and that's something I would normally do later on once I've got um, the, the, basically the CPU running at a certain point. But at the moment it's not getting even part way through a microcode sequence so there's not really any point doing that i know the cpu isn't working i also know that there's no point looking at the unibus because it's not getting as far as trying to put anything onto the unibus so that wouldn't really tell me anything i need to get the microcode uh, sequencer working before i can really move on so um, that's really what i'm focusing on now if you do have an M8266 board that you want to sell, then please contact me. The easiest solution will be to find a working board, um, pop the PROMs out, read them all, and um, at least then I can also make that code available to anyone else uh, that has a similar problem. Uh, and also it would be nice if um, there was a, a copy of this uh, code around. Um, it's not a single ROM. I think there are, as I say, 25, maybe even 30 uh, proms on this board alone and then at some point I need to move on and start looking at the M8265 board which is the second board um, but at the moment I think most of the issues uh, that are causing it to not run at all are on the uh, 66 board which is the one I'm currently looking at.